Today we're going to look at weights and workflows. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you what a weight is. Now, we've got a restart command in this script. So what it's going to do is it's going to tell the machine, I'm going to wait for the machine, which in this case is remotely, um, is going to restart. So it's going to wait for that restart. It's not a specified period of time. It's just a periodic polling. So you can see that it's actually polling and it's continuing to check whether the machine has finished restarting. And when it has, we'll continue on with this script. Now, that works fine if you're running things from a central place or remotely against machines. Where it falls apart is if you want to run it locally. And a good example of this might be that I have a script that joins an Active Directory or alternatively builds an Active Directory. You might have a restart step that you need to do before you continue creating things like OU structures. But it's very difficult to do that when your script needs to restart and you can't therefore can't run it locally and the credentials are changing potentially. So the way around this is things called workflow. Now workflow, just like a function, follows the or wraps around your script. So in this case a workflow is I've got four commands. Two of them will output to file before and the last one will output to file after the restart. So we can check to see that the restart happened and that the next step in the script actually took place. And it's context related in this respect. So there's no remote here. This is all running locally. So we're going to copy paste it, which basically will create our workflow um, that we can call on. And from that workflow, we can then run um, and, and complete the script as it would be without needing to do this remotely. Now that's very important because if you think about it, there are times when you're going to want to run it locally and you don't want to have to have another machine or maybe you don't have another machine to run it on. Let's say as an example, where we take the Active Directory example, you're building that structure. Active Directory needs to do a restart before you can create the OU structure. And that's something you can't do if you need to change credentials halfway through or alternatively re-log in and then run the second half of the script. So this allows you to do it without breaking it. And this is always a thing that is very important when scripting. And I, I do have to respect that PowerShell is a lot like SQL in that respect, that you need to think about where your scripts are running from and to. Now we've just finished the reboot, so we're gonna quickly check the files. And as you can see, we have three files, two from before, one after. And that shows that our workflow actually completed ends to end, even with the reboot. Uh, two-thirds of the way through it. If you like this video, show us some love, hit the subscribe or hit the like button so we can produce more of these.